Radio, the 68 Network, with the coach, Matt Zimmerman, on 30 Minutes of Hell. It won't be that painful, coach, trust me. And the safest driver in the world, David Shoemaker. That's with, it. With his seatbelt. And the voice, <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend, in the back, Chuck Barrett. Why y'all no stuff seat him belt. In the- No seatbelt, shooter. Why y'all stuff him in the back like there next to shoes, all shoes closed? I mean, come on, man. <laughs> Hold him up. Keep him comfy. Coach, you guys right now, and this is going out to all uh, Razorback fans. We'll send this out on Twitter. You do as great as of a job as anybody. I'm talking global. Like, I haven't listened to the, 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 the guys that call Le Football when they do their pregame, postgame stuff. But you, <laughs> I guarantee you, there's nobody in, um, what's the big uh, English soccer team or the club there? Manchester United. There you go. He ain't got nothing on you, coach. Nothing on you. So you guys are, dri- you guys are driving to St. Louis. Yeah. Then you're hopping on a bird. No, 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 no. We're just driving to St. Louis. We had to work for it the day today, so we're going to stop at St. Louis, and then we're going to drive the rest of the way tomorrow. We want to get to Indy early tomorrow. That's the plan. We want to be there pretty early tomorrow so we can scope everything out. You going to sneak in some good food for those guys up there? Sounds like that. Sounds like that they haven't been getting some of that uh, Razorback fuel that they need to uh, – Getting those tanks. I heard uh, the hotel food isn't, you know, it's not like how we normally get it from Urban's Rim House or something like that. <laughs> yeah, the Razorback says some of them said the food wasn't as good. You know, hotel food's usually pretty good. So I don't know what the deal is, but you know, I, I think a lot of their meals they bring it to their to their room basically and send it outside. So maybe it, maybe when they're getting it, they're getting it a little bit cold. But uh, it you know, I, yeah. I play with a few guys who would have figured out a way to tie a couple of sheets together and put it out their window, hang it out their window of the hotel yeah. room, and and they'd be pulling up some <laughs> some, yeah. some of the finest Indianapolis cuisine they could have, uh, they could find pulling up through the window. <laughs> you think Kareem Reed would get some good wings or get some good food? Oh, hey, you know him. He'd figure out a way how to go and get it and come back. He was so quick. I don't think any manager could <laughs> – could could track him down first of all he he cornered the market on understanding how to get in and out of the hotel lobby before someone would catch him yeah yeah he's still that way he's still that way as a matter of fact i've been trying to uh uh, get him nailed down for uh this podcast and my goodness coach he he's been he's been giving me the run around like he's running (laughs) He's running that 2740 or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's got uh, one of the best New York ac- New York accents of all time, doesn't he? Oh, Bronx, baby, through and through. He's a Bronx legend. You know what his Rucker League uh, nickname is? What his, oh. you know, best kept secret. He's got the tattoo, best kept secret, was given oh. to him. Uh, from his many years at the Rucker League, played at the EBC Entertainers Basketball Classic. So let's get into turning time. Turning time. Um, few things. I'm looking at the bracket now. So I will talk just a few things that stuck out to me overall. And then I'll uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the Hogs path. Uh, I thought in the East... Alabama, think of this, matching up against the coach. Rick Patino is back. Yeah. Possibly UConn, Danny Hurley, who he has, Nate Oates has a connection going back with the Hurley yeah. brothers. Yeah. Your, your guy, Shaka Smart, if Texas can hold true. Yeah. Good seeding. Uh, and then, you know, either – I think LSU is going to get Michigan. I think they're going to get St. Not overlooking St. Bonaventure, but I just think you get the LSU team from the conference tournament. They play best under the bright lights when they may not play. Coach, cold 
Tuesday night in February in Oxford, Mississippi, probably not going to get your best LSU team. Okay. <laughs> Prime time. <laughs> SEC tournament, NCAA tournament, those guys are engaged, ready to go. Uh, yeah. Chip on their shoulder. So I, I like them getting uh, – the game against Florida State is going to be the toss-up for me. Uh, those are my initial thoughts with SEC teams. Um, Tennessee, I think that they're playing their best basketball in that Midwest region. They've got size, toughness to match up against Illinois. West Virginia, Houston, all tough teams. Uh, those are just my initial thoughts before we get – and I think Gonzaga looks so good. Um, but before we get to the south and Arkansas's path, those are just kind of the few things that stood out to me overall in the other regions. Yeah, you're right on LSU. They played very well in Nashville. You know, when, when, when we played them on Saturday – that's the best I'd seen them play, you know, really since January. They look pretty determined. Everyone talks about the four really good players they got. To me, they've got three very good players. Darius Day sometimes is, is really good. Sometimes he's not as much. They have – when they hit the floor, usually they've got three of the best players or the three best players. And that's how talented they are with Javante Smart and Cam Thomas and Wofford. Wofford was really good against us yeah. in, 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 in critical times. But St. Bonaventure is a hard-nosed, tough team. Uh, Coach Schmidt, he's done a great job up there. And they they will – that'll be a heck of a game. That'll be a heck of a game, those two, LSU and St. Bonny. And if LSU can get by them, I do. I like them over Michigan. Michigan's got injuries, and that's going to impact them. And they've, got some, they've got some talented guys, especially one that won't be there. That impacts your team when you lose a great player like that so it'll be interesting to see what michigan can does overall i'm anxious to see the big 10 because all we've been hearing about it how it's been the best league and i'm not so sure because pat you know there's been in recent history there's been times that the big 10 goes in with 9 10 11 bids and they they only have one left standing in the sweet 16 we've seen that before we've right. seen the big 10 get throttled in the ncaa tournament so it'll be interesting as is it for real? Is this the Big Ten for real as we thought it is all year? Or is it just a, just another average league? So a lot of that's going to gonna factor out, and uh, that'll be interesting to see. Um, all right, first-round matchup, Colgate. Now, I'm sure you guys around the office have been using all your Colgate puns. They hadn't beat – they, they get a better chance of beating bad breath than they do the hogs. You know, we, 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 we're going to, we're going to get that bad taste out of our mouth of that LSU loss. Thanks to Colgate. You, I mean, you, you understand coach. I'm sure you guys have been uh, working on some of those puns. When you saw Colgate pop up and match up for us, what were, and I'm, I know you did your digging. Pardon my last pun. You brushed up on Colgate, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I got to get them all out, though, Coach. Got to get them all out. Yeah. Would you? Would you? Of, I wasn't very familiar with Colgate other than a Donald Foyle uh, uh, twenty years ago. Remember Donald yeah. Foyle? Oh yeah, high draft pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he made a heck of a run. What were your first thoughts after kind of going straight to their website and looking up everything that that you could on them? Yeah. All I knew about them before was that. They had not played very many games because I just heard them talking about that last week. And then when you find out you're playing them, the first thing is, you know, one of the Arkansas media people says, hey, you know what? They've played five different opponents. That's <laughs> it. And you're like, wow, you know, the Razorbacks have played 20 something different opponents. And so you're, you're really just shocked well, at that. And they beat Boston University, right? The Terriers. Yeah. I mean, they're a research institution. They beat them five times and, and they beat. College of the Holy Cross. I mean, yeah. a, Catholic, a Catholic institution. Who's who went to Holy Cross? Bob Cousy. Oh, Bob Cousy. Doctor Anthony Foster Mass. Yeah, Fauci, and my good buddy from Everett, Sandro Colaruso, played football there. So there you go, the trifecta. <laughs> but what was that guy's name again? 
Alessandro Colaruso. He's six feet. He's 5'10 by 5'10. He's a great nose guard. Great Italian nose guard. Um, how's, so, yeah. uh, how's Holy Cross is, football? Holy Cross football? It's pretty good. You know, they're, 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 they're about par for the course in, in this region of uh, Patriot League football. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Colgate, we know. They didn't play a lot of teams, but they scored a lot of points yep. with their style of basketball. Um, going through that and their numbers, what 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 do you look at? How do you see the matchup with that? We know definitely we got Colgate. One thing about them is it's not just one or two guys that can shoot the ball well. They got seven or eight guys that can shoot three well, and they're big step out and shoot. Their bigs are great screeners. And a lot of them are six, 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 seven, six, eight kind of bigs, but they're pick and pop guys. They're constantly screening around the perimeter or at the elbow. Guards will be running off of them. They'll be back screening and popping out. So you've got to be able to handle those screens. If, if not, you're going to be watching the ball, you know, quick three-point shots for them. Their point guard is, is very important to them. He's a distributor. You know, he's about six foot, pretty quick. He's the guy that kind of takes care of everybody and tries to keep them happy, and he seems to do it. Good job of that. Um, defensively, you know, their coach has kind of got a reputation of being a pretty good defensive guy. And this year, especially from February on, they, they've been playing much better defense statistically. It's hard to really get a grasp on it based on who they're playing. Mm -hmm. I think that's where they're going to have their problems, PB, is, you know, how are they going to be able to stay in front of Arkansas's driving guards like a, right. like a J.D. Note, Moses Moody, Devontae Davis, guys that are really good attacking. That's why the Razorbacks had this long winning streak was because they, they drove it so well. They attacked oh, nice. constantly on the attack. And I just think Colgate defensively will have their hands full trying to defend Arkansas. That's where their issues will be. Yeah. And, and I, the way I see it, they, as good as their offense was this year, and you said it's seven guys that shoot from 30% to over 50% from the three point line, right? They make yeah. out 10 per game. Yeah. Um, I just, first of all, they haven't seen the length. Jalen Tate, 6'6", six, six, Moses Moody, 6'6", six, six, Devo Davis at 6'3", he's got what? If he doesn't clip his fingernails, coach, he's got a 6'9", wingspan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, sure. so you got guys, and we've seen the ability, particularly against Bama, when we beat them in Bud, to contain the ball and contest the three. I, like everyone... I know people have this on upset radar. I just, it's hard for me to believe that our defense is going to give, give like any sort of mismatch situation. I mean, even Justin uh, Smith is athletic, can get out and guard the perimeter. Am I, am I missing something in terms of like them being able to score over 70 on us? And maybe if it's 95 to 75. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be any I don't want to overlook anybody but I just don't feel that they're going to be able to score like they have been or close to it well no for sure I don't think they'll be able to either they, they have just not seen the kind of defensive pressure they're going to have when they face Arkansas coach Musselman's been talking about it all week about how you know they run some variances of the Princeton offense so we've got to you know we got to pressure the basketball a lot you can't just sit, them, sit there and let them pick out their passes and so I think that he's going to be really focused on hard pressure you know, and maybe even pressing them some a little bit in full court, which he doesn't do a lot, but he has shown it on occasion this year, but especially some half court trap. And if not, just aggressive pressure yeah. in the half court man to man defense. You know, Arkansas is not going to play any zone. They're going to get out, they're going to pressure the basketball. And I think the guys that are off the ball, I don't think he's going to be out denying all over the floor. But when your guy catches it, I think Coach Musselman's going to have our guys all the way into him trying to pressure. And the other guys, because Colgate cuts so much, he cuts so well, look for the other guys to be sinking in the paint a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. So dropping off to help more. And then when my man catches it, I'm sprinting out, I'm closing out, I'm making sure he doesn't get a clean look at it. And I know that you want Colgate dribbling the basketball as opposed to catching it and shooting it. So I think pressure on the ball will be the key to the Razorbacks defense. 
I like it. I like in our quickness. Um, so I'm going to assume, should we assume Texas Tech beats Utah State? Or we should no. assume that? No. Whoa, breaking news, breaking news. No, they're, they're the better team. You know that late night basketball, BB, when you're up there sleeping in Massachusetts, <laughs> I'm watching the late, you're slobbering on your pillow. I'm watching Mountain West basketball. I'm watching the West Coast Conference. I'm watching the WAC. And these guys, I've seen them three or four times on TV, and they just stood out to me with they rebound. They play pretty good defense, Utah State. They're well coached. They got a couple guys that can really shoot the basketball. They don't have a team full of shooters, but they're kind of a dangerous team. If I was playing Utah State, I would have a little bit of worries. I mean, Texas Tech's overall a better program than them. But I guarantee you, Chris Beard and Texas Tech, they're not spending hardly any time thinking about Arkansas because wow. they know, they know, they know we've got our hands full with Utah State. And uh, so, and you know, one thing with Texas Tech, even in their non-conference games, even their money games or buy games, they very seldom beat people like 88 to 48. They, they mostly will beat them, even in a buy game, they'll beat them by 20 because they play more of a possession-dominated game, medium to slower pace. And so if you – play a pretty good team like Utah State, it becomes a possession game, something Utah State's pretty decent at as well. This could be a, you know, this could be in the 50s, wow. 60s, low 60s. And and that's normally, like you said, recipe for an upset, right? Limit the possessions yeah. of the of the of yeah. the favored team or the favorite team or the better seated team. Um just yes. Well, I guess the matchup, if you could see a better matchup for the Hogs in that second round game, uh, with that being said, would would you would you think it's a toss up or, or Utah State would be a better matchup? If I was if I was the Razorbacks, I'd rather play Utah State. Right. Just because you know, you you know, you know Texas Tech's dangerous. They played the national championship game. 2019. Now they have a whole new team. I'm one of those guys that player. But broke it up there. Broke it up a little there. I think you're back. What? Okay, I got you back now. Okay, I got you okay. back. I think yeah, we, we lost you right at That's Texas. Texas. <laughs> and one yeah. of the well, Texas, Texas Tech, as we talked about the possession games, I'd rather play Utah State than Texas Tech. But right. you know, Texas Tech, if you're Arkansas, if you can get the 70 points, you probably beat Texas Tech. They they still play good defense, like they did in 29, right. 2019. But Texas Tech does not score as well as they did then. That team that made the national championship game can score. And these right. guys don't, they don't, his team right now, Mac McClung's a good scorer. You know, they got a couple other guys that are pretty good mid range shooters, but they don't, they don't have a ton of just great scores at Texas Tech. You've got to guard McClung or he'll get 30, you know? Right. So it seems, it seems to me for Texas Tech, they rely heavily on turning you over and turning that into points. And they're a high free throw shooting team. Yep. Uh, and and it, obviously, we are a high free throw shooting team. We love getting, to, to, to the free throw line, though, was like 40-plus against, what, Auburn and then 30-something against LSU, and it seems to be our recipe for success. Uh, I like us getting to that Sweet 16 game, Coach. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to fast forward to that game against Baylor, and all I have to say against this Baylor team, that trio, that three-point shooting trio – I feel like we def we defend the three point line as good as any team in the country. Okay, I yep. think that's a winnable game, Sweet Sixteen Baylor game, right? Is that that Baylor game? Yep. That's no, that. I think you're gonna have Ohio State. You have Ohio, Ohio State, State probably. My bad, Ohio and State. Have, yep, and then the final eight games, it would either be, it could be Purdue. Could be Purdue, Purdue Baylor, North Purdue's Carolina. Tough. Yep. 
David Shoemaker is a North Carolina graduate. He says North Carolina is going to be there. I don't think so. We owe them. But... They got that link. That link. Uh, yeah, Ohio got them link. Athleticism, that can take you a long way, we know. And in, in North Carolina, they'll get the calls. They'll get some calls in that tournament. <laughs> We've seen yeah. that. We know that. We've lived that for sure. Um, all right, Coach, the two next teams, I'm going to ask you about matchups. I, I jumped the gun on that Baylor one. I, 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 already, got a, I already got a scribbled in. <laughs> uh, Ohio State, another team dependent on uh, shooting the ball, even their big guys, more of a finesse big guy. Don't really hurt you in the paint as much. Um, we've, we've, they made it all the way to the championship game, so we know they can compete and beat and win those types of games against the best in the business. Um, how do you – if that matchup, Arkansas-Ohio State, what are some keys in that one? Well, for them, they've got guys that can drive it, and they, they shoot a lot of threes. Like you said, they don't really throw it inside a lot to a back-to-the-basket guy like Ohio State used to have. So for them, you got to obviously guard the three point line and then contest them as they drive in. Another thing with Ohio State, got a pretty good bench. Arkansas' strength is bench and depth. Ohio State has a pretty decent bench. Chris Holman's a good coach. But one problem they've had seems to be defensive issues at times. And they have struggled, like, like they might go play Michigan and get blown out and give up 80 and 90 points. Then you'll see them play Wisconsin or Iowa, and the game will be in the 60s. And so I think Wisconsin, I think that Ohio State plays better when they can control the tempo, kind of make it a possession game a little bit. They don't play super fast, and, and they don't want the score being really high. This isn't the old Michael Connolly, Ohio State, who's trying to hang 88 on you. Hmm. They're, they're not really doing that as much. But they do have some shooters, and you've you got to crowd those shooters and make some of them other guys beat you. they got a pretty good bench. So it'll be interesting if they can get there. One thing with them, Pat, they've been hot and they've been cold. They are a very, very up and down basketball team. They have not been consistent at all. They got a little bit of old miss in them like that. You know what I mean? A little inconsistent right. play. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, who plays in this tournament for Ohio State. And then the last game would be, and let's – I guess I'll just just pick it out would be, you know, Baylor, like we said, or North Carolina, Purdue. It really seems like an open bracket, Coach. Would you sort of agree on that? I mean, the South, to me, uh, looks looks open, vulnerable, chance to get through it. Really, all of them, to me, are that way. I just think that it's just a wide-open tournament. Playing in this bubble, you don't know how these guys are going to be. You don't know how people are going to shoot. Right, you know, good it, point. It's – there's so many factors into this deal, how the game is officiated. You know, some of the top referees aren't going to be at this NCAA tournament because of the virus. And so there's just a lot of questions. There's always upsets, right, Matt? Always. This year, there could be even more than normal because of this quarantine and the bubble and all the factors that go in. There could be some crazy upsets in Indianapolis. And the Blue Bloods aren't there. You know, the Blue Bloods right. aren't around, so that makes a big difference. And another thing about the Blue Bloods, with them not there, other than North Carolina barely hanging on, and Kansas barely hanging on, and it's the almost Blue Bloods that always <laughs> do so well, Pat, in the NCAA tournament. The almost Blue Bloods of Indiana, Arizona, UConn, Syracuse, UCLA, they're not, they're not very good either. Right. You know, so even the almost blue bloods that the you know, they're 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 struggling this right. year. And so I what do you what do you call Gonzaga? I would call them, I guess, an almost blue blood. I don't think you put them in there with those top four, but you know, I guess they're now they've earned the right over the last twenty years. You know, Arkansas was in that. When you played here, Arkansas was almost blue blood. They were in that next little step. Sure. You know, yeah. and, and, and that's what you're trying to get back to. So with, with, let's say we got everything clicking and our defense, what, and I'm not even going to say how far do you think we can go because there's so many factors. I mean, I, I don't even like those questions because yes, we can beat anybody in that, in that region. I mean, we've shown to be able to play at that level. 
I guess what I would ask in, is instead, what, what, not how high of a ceiling in, in a sense, what do you want to see or what encouraging signs will you see and uh, for us to be able to make that run, that dream magical run? Um, would it be taking care of the ball, shot selection? Like the one thing I th thought that changed the season coach like at Tennessee, our shot selection was much, but we didn't win that game. But you could, I saw something turn with them, understanding who, what, when, where needs the ball. And guys yeah. taking better shots. Even if you miss them, it's a better shot, looking shot. Um, which is decision-making at the end, right? Coach Richardson taught us that. But I think Coach yeah. Muss, Coach Muss has kind of got it through their heads. Uh, it's, what things have you seen – that you'll have, you'll they'll have to do to to make that deep run. I think a deep run for the Razorbacks will come down to the depth. And the thing that's carried this team from February until now is it's so unpredictable for the opponents. Okay, I, we do a great job on limiting Justin Smith and Moses Moody, but JD has twenty seven points off the bench, and Devonte Davis scores eighteen points. Connor Vanover scores 14 points. It, there's just so much balance and so much depth. Right. And I think that's going to carry it. If, if Moses is not having, because they're going to focus on Moses, right? And then they're going to put a good defender on Justin Smith. They're going to talk about when J.D. Note comes in, how good he is at driving it, and he can catch and shoot. And they're going to put so much focus on that. It's hard for teams to beat a good team like Arkansas with Jalen Tate, who you just think is a role-playing point guard, get you for 15 points and seven rebounds and eight assists and four steals. And, you know, he picks up the slack. I mean, right. Desi Seals can come in, Pat, and make five threes. He's done it. He right. might make zero, but he's capable. Connor Vanover is capable. We've seen game after game this year. We don't know what Vance is going to give. But we've also thought, okay, well, Vance hadn't been given anything. Just when you think Vance is done, he comes in the first half of the game and knocks down two three-pointers. Yeah. You know, and so I, to me, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, taking care of the ball, rebounding, defense, all the fundamentals of basketball will obviously be critical. But to me, it's about this team and how they depend on each other. And it's you just can't stop Moses Moody and beat Arkansas. Now, you can stop him. He might have four points. The Racebacks might beat you by 15 points with all these other guys. It's just right. how this team's been throughout this season. In fact, there's not a lot of teams with this kind of depth. Hmm. Good point, Coach. I appreciate it. I want you guys to drive safe. That was excellent. Right on the fly, literally. I hope you're following all the uh, speed limit protocols as you guys enter. <laughs> you're doing a good job. We're not driving. We're, we're about to pass the J.B. Hunt truck, good Arkansas company. There you go. Missouri. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're rolling on, and we're just trying to be safe and uh, get there and Looking forward to it, man. We just want to stay. We just want yeah. to stay in it stay as long as we can. I see. That's why you got all those shirts and polos stacked yeah. up. You got, you got about four weeks worth. Three, three We're weeks. I'm going to be here three weeks. I plan on being here 20 nights and 21 days. 20 nights and 21 days. Well, from the I look. Brought 20, I brought 20 pair of drawers, and I'm wearing a pair. <laughs> so, I got, I got 21 of them. Hey, from the looks of it, Shoemaker, uh, uh, it looks like he can drive right into that Indianapolis Motor Speedway, looking at the at the rate of speed that those trees are going by. Okay, <laughs> he drives a little bit, a little bit faster than me, but he's not too bad. Well, you'll be we in went Indianapolis. To Nashville <laughs> by, we went by to tonight. Nashville last week, Matt. We went to Nashville last week, and, and uh, Chuck Merritt kept saying I drove like a grandma. <laughs> he was on me the whole time but you know what we made it there safely and we made it home safely coach i love you be safe shoemaker thank you buddy be safe chuck barrett in the back hopefully is he still there or did he fall fall <laughs> okay here you go. yeah i took a little nap on you there fatty yeah he's listening <laughs> he said he's listening intently to this riveting conversation riveting. between me and you riveting yeah. podcast he loves yeah. it Use it to yeah. fall asleep at night. <laughs> <laughs>
Whoever gets the downloads, baby. Oh, I love it. All right, guys, thank you. That See, Coach, wasn't that bad? 30 minutes of hell, baby. All right, I'll shoot you a message. Thank you.